Now it really doesn't matter whether you are flying the brand new DJI Mini 3 Pro, the ever trusted DJI Mini 2, the absolute powerhouse that is the DJI Air 2S, or of course any other drone model or manufacturer such as the Autel Nano Plus, the last thing you want to be doing is losing your drone. And that's why absolutely thousands of you worldwide tend to apps such as this one. This is an app called UAV Forecast and it's pretty much the most popular app when it comes to drone users checking the conditions before they fly their drone. Now what I'm going to do in this video is show you exactly what set Settings you should be setting this on because it's one of the most popular questions I see asked on social media and also just highlight one of the biggest mistakes people are actually making when it does come to using apps like this. So let's get into it. I assume that you have a basic knowledge of this app. Of course, you know um, if you have downloaded this app, you can pretty much see certain screens. You're going to be aware of clicking uh, between the conditions, the forecast, the wind profile, the map. You can, of course, adjust your own settings to your own preferences. You do not need me to go through that. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to be a little bit geeky and uh, just to try and explain when it comes to the wind parameters, but I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. So before we start, I'm going to deliver on something I promised in the outset to the video and explain exactly what mistake people are making using apps like this. And the biggest mistake is the fact that this is purely a forecast. It is not set in stone. Of course, if this gives you uh, a wind speed that is relatively low, you look outside and you can see there is nearly trees uprooting, you know that the app isn't quite accurate. And what I tend to do is because we've already got some baseline information on this app, I then take what is showing on this app and I actually cross-reference it with another forecasting app, whether it be a Google Weather or something like that, just to sort of collaborate the information that this is giving you. Because there has been a couple of times when this has been saying it is bright sunshine and it's been absolutely chucking it down with rain. So please do not take this as absolutely gospel. And what I'm going to show you is as we get into the menus that the information that this app actually gives you in terms of whether it's green or red is only as good as the information you are entering. So let's look at the screen now and the first one I'm going to show you is the temperature. This is 24 degrees and the best way to set this is going to the manufacturer's instructions or of course the specification sheet depending on what drug you have. For this example I've chosen the DJI Mini 3 and as you can see DJI claim uh, that that could be used in temperatures up to minus 10. So all we need to do is set the minimum temperature as minus 10, max temperature set that to 40. Now I have clicked that we are now getting that temperature tab showing as green and that's because we're now within parameters so this is exactly what i mean when it comes to this app whether it be red or green is only as good as the information you are actually giving it now I'm going to very quickly dismiss one of the major features when it comes to this app and that is all to do with the visible satellites and satellites locked. If we click this tab you can see we can select all sorts of options, we can toggle satellites on or off which of course will affect our readings as you can see which is happening on screen. Ultimately it doesn't really matter what the hell this app tells you providing you are uh, acquiring enough satellites when you turn your drone on and you are getting the message that your home point has been updated, you are absolutely good to go. Now the next one is the KP index. As you can see, geomagnetic storm index 0 to 9 above 3 means disruption to GPS reception. So what will that affect if you was flying your drone then? Well, because it affects the GPS, it might mean that your drone uh, has too much interference between itself and the satellites that it's locked into and it might get a false position, basically meaning that should you be in a return to home situation or need to press that return to home button the drone could actually uh, miscalculate where it was actually coming back to and that causes all sorts of problems. Generally anything up to three is absolutely fine. I don't personally take off if the KP index is more than three. So as you can see today we have got a KP rating of four that is above our uh, selected maximum of three and that's why the app is giving us that not good to fly despite the fact that everything else might be perfectly fine.
So for the big one then, this is the real reason you are watching this video, I am absolutely sure, and that is what settings should you put this app on when it comes to maximum wind speeds for safe flying. Now if we look at our screen, I have purposely chosen the meters per second unit just so it's easier to work with compared to the drone's specification sheet. Now if we take the DJI Mini 3 Pro look at the specification sheet, in sport mode its maximum speed is of course 16 meters per second, basically meaning that if you was flying into a headwind which was 15 meters per second you can of course make a forward progress at one meters per second however we have to factor in a couple of things naturally we have got two separate parameters we've got wind speed and we have got gust speed now gusts of course are simply that they are gusts and they are not constant so you are reasonably um correct to assume that you know you have got a little bit of leeway there so Gavin you said to me that the DJI Mini 3 Pro for example can do 16 meters per second that means I can set my gusts at 15 meters per second or my wind at 15 meters per second and I'm all good to go well no and this is where it gets a little bit tricky because this is only good if you actually have control of your drone at all times. What do I mean by that? Well, if you have some sort of signal disconnection and that drone kicks into fail safe return to home, here's the thing, that drone will only return to home at a speed of 10.7 meters per second. Basically meaning that if you don't have control of your drone, you cannot put it in sport mode and press the forward stick to actually fight the wind anything over 10.7 meters per second headwind the drone is not going to be able to make forward momentum to get itself home so when it comes to actually flicking these buttons here and if you want to be ultra safe what you need to do is set your maximum wind speed at the speed with which your drone actually returns home under a return to home situation. Now the best way to get this information as to your return to home speed is simply by going to the drone manufacturer's website, find your model, go into the specifications or the user manual and just have a look at what it says its return to home speed is. Now even though the Mini 3 Pro doesn't set a specific uh, return to home speed, it does claim that the maximum wind speed it can handle is 10.7 meters per second. Incidentally, that is exactly the speed that this drone does return to home. That is what you should be setting this app onto. Now, of course, you know, that is extremely cautious. Um, and of course, you can exercise your own judgment on this one. But just wanted to give you that information so you knew exactly what parameters you should be working to. Now, all that is explained, I just want to show the last little indicator, which I feel could be quite useful on location, and that's where it says the wind direction indicator. I flick on this little tab, which says use compass, and then as you can see, we get the wind direction on there. So no matter what you need to do, if you want to jiggle your phone around, depending on where it is facing, you can see quite easily which direction the wind is coming from. The old-fashioned solution would be to lick your finger, and just put your finger in the air and see which direction the wind is actually coming from. But if that's a bit too old school for you, that's what you can use this app for. So that wraps up this video. Hopefully by watching this, uh, I've tried to make it as short as possible and get everything in. Hopefully you have a better idea of what settings you should use on apps such as this. And please do remember it is just a forecast and a lot of the information, whether it's green or red, is entirely what you input as the drone operator. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you found it useful. Subscribe if you're awesome and see you again soon.